Wow, stories. Twenty years ago, I left a long-term relationship. It did not end amicably. I discovered he had been cheating. He denied that it qualified as cheating, and you can probably guess how unproductive that discussion was. Quite simply, he turned out not to be the man I thought he was. I was heartbroken and grieved for a long time. I have had no contact with him since we ended things, but life goes on. I picked up the pieces, got my PhD, and met an incredible, wonderful woman to whom I am now married. We have a child, and I can honestly say my family is the best thing in my life, and objectively speaking, the best thing in the universe. I work as a researcher and in a very niche subfield, to the point where the people who collaborate with each other in this subfield can probably be counted on your fingers and toes. It's not unusual for me to get emails from people I've never met asking about particulars of research I've contributed to, especially from young women, who are oftentimes overwhelmed by how many men there are in the field. And feel more comfortable reaching out to another woman. If you are interested in my subfield, which not many people are, it's pretty easy to find me and contact me via the email alias. My institution has set up for me. About a year and a half ago, I received an email from a young woman I didn't know. The email said she was a student at an institution that has several people I've worked with on staff, and that she was interested in research in my field. She asked some fairly standard questions about some research I had contributed to a few years previously. She then said she was the daughter of Guish, insert ex-boyfriend's name here, Chesh, and that he said hello. I honestly wasn't sure what to make of it, and partially thought it was some bizarre joke. And because I was extremely busy at that time, I simply never replied. A few weeks ago, I was attending a small research symposium where a few of my colleagues were presenting their work. I was just there as moral support and for the free coffee and snacks, not to present anything myself. But I was chatting with a few other people I knew who were introducing me to their students, cracking bad jokes about each other's work, etc. I was approached by a young woman who introduced herself, and before I could try and place her name, she mentioned that she was the one who had sent me the email last year. I immediately remembered. Because I remember thinking of her email as bizarre. I tried to remain professional, and the young woman herself was very polite and didn't raise any red flags. But after she talked a little bit about her research interests, she again mentioned that she was Shash insert ex boyfriend's name daughter, and that he talks about me all the time. At that point, I had to drop the professional act, said I had work to get to, and since all my colleagues had finished presenting, I just left. I told my wife everything that night. I hadn't told her about the initial email because I figured it was a bizarre one-off, but this made me feel uncomfortable, so I wanted to ask her advice. She initially had the same questions I did about the whole situation: how do I know this person is who she says she is, etc. And then, after thinking about it for a little while, simply said that I should do whatever my gut says. Well, that night I checked my email before going to bed to find that a colleague I frequently collaborate with. Had sent me an email of introduction for this young woman. The email mentioned, "It looks like you previously worked with her father. It's a small world." Not verbatim, but that's the gist. I met my ex-boyfriend through work, and recommended her for a summer research position at my institution. I showed my wife, who raised her eyebrows but didn't say anything, and then set it aside and didn't reply. It's now been a few weeks since then, and the young woman recently emailed me again. Asking if she could talk to me about research, no mention of the ex-boyfriend this time. I'm unsure of what to do here. Ignoring her is the simple answer, but the subfield is so small, and she appears to be my colleague's prized student. I don't want to cause any awkwardness in any working relationships if I ignore this, but I also don't want to talk about something that happened in my personal life over 20 years ago. My wife thinks I should just ignore her. And we've talked about what either course of action would look like: replying to this woman or ignoring her. But she's left the decision up to me. I don't know anyone who handled anything like this, so I thought I would seek advice here. Now, for a few comments before the update. Comment one: Being that it's such a small field and that you are genuinely interested in bettering circumstances for your female peers, I don't see why you would take any stance other than to treat her as well as you would any other aspiring up-and-comer. 
I would simply communicate to her that your relationship with her father was not as good for you as he seems to describe it, and that you are willing to help her professionally, but have no interest in revisiting that time in your life or having anything to do with her father going forward. If she wants to know why, it's, it's simply not her business. Keep it professional. It seems she has been led to believe that your relationship had been better than it was. So why wouldn't she try to use that angle to be seen in a good light by you? She's wrong and that's unfortunate, but not really her fault. She seems to actually be interested in your field and you are a valuable resource. While it's possible her father pushed her to approach you in this way for his own reasons, to possibly reconnect with you, or to hurt you in some way. But once the record is set straight, without delving into details, I'd hope that she will drop the subject and be professional herself. Comment two. I honestly think her dad probably just briefly mentioned you because it's pretty niche and she's trying to take advantage of it to network and make connections. I don't know why you'd ignore her or why you're reading so much into it. I've had random people who are relatives of family friends contact me for work advice and mentioned how they know me. Some definitely make more of the connection than there is because they're trying to advance their career. The poor girl hasn't done anything to you. Now for the update. Thanks for sticking around for the update. So the situation with my ex's daughter got messier. I decided to reply to her email thinking I could keep it strictly professional. Big mistake. We set up a meeting to discuss her research and she was sharp. I'll give her that. But then halfway through, she drops the news. She's looking for a mentor and specifically wants me. I felt cornered like I was being played, but I agreed thinking I could handle it. The next thing I know, she's in my office, papers spread everywhere, and it's like she's moved in. My colleagues start whispering, and I can tell they're connecting the dots between her and my past. I'm kicking myself for not setting boundaries, but it's too late now. Then one day, she leaves her email open on my computer. And there it is, an email from my ex, thanking her for keeping tabs on me. It's like I've been punched in the gut. I confront her and she breaks down, admitting she's been reporting back to him all along. I feel betrayed, not just by her, but by myself for letting this happen. I tell my wife and she's livid. She wants me to cut ties immediately, but I'm worried about the fallout. I've built a reputation in this field and I can't afford to have it tarnished by personal drama. But my wife insists, and I know she's right. I tell the young woman she needs to find another mentor, and I brace myself for the backlash. It doesn't take long. My colleague, her actual advisor, confronts me, accusing me of abandoning a promising student over a personal vendetta. I try to explain without getting too personal, but it's clear he doesn't buy it. Rumors start flying and I can feel the respect of my peers slipping away. In a last ditch effort to salvage my reputation, I decide to come clean at the next department meeting. I lay it all out, my history with my ex, his daughter's deception, everything. It's humiliating, but to my surprise, my colleagues rally around me. They're appalled by the manipulation and offer their support. It's a small victory but it feels like a weight has been lifted. Just when I think I can breathe again, my ex shows up at a conference I'm attending. He's all smiles and handshakes, acting like we're old friends. I'm seething inside, but I keep it together for the sake of professionalism. He tries to corner me for a chat, but I shut him down, telling him there's nothing left to say. I thought that would be the end of it, but no. He starts showing up at more events, talking to my colleagues, weaving his way back into my professional circle. It's like he's taunting me, showing me he can still get under my skin after all these years. But then something unexpected happens. One of my oldest colleagues, someone who's been in the field even longer than I have, pulls me aside. He tells me he knows my ex from way back, knows exactly what kind of person he is. He's seen this pattern before and he's not gonna stand for it. He starts spreading the word and soon enough, My ex finds himself on the outside looking in. He tries to hold his ground, but without support, he's got nothing. It's a strange feeling, watching him finally get a taste of his own medicine. I don't take pleasure in it, but there's a sense of relief that I'm not the only one who sees him for who he is. My colleague's support is a reminder that I'm not alone, that I've earned my place here through hard work and integrity. 